y'all have any questions for him, uh, he will answer some questions for you after we conclude. Uh, any anything you want to ask him, I believe he'll be open to, to give you some answers and maybe help you kind of put you in the right path, right direction. So y'all ready for Brian Harris? Yeah. Ryan S. Harris. Or hurt you. He's redesigning you 
to make you great. He's redesigning you to make you better. So what happened was, I was actually looking out the window one day, and I was just like, well, God, you said in your word, talking to myself, you know, really talking to God, you said in your word, and if I, if I believe, and if I, and if I have it in my brain, I can, I can have anything that I desire, and I ask you for this, and you didn't deliver, are you real? I asked him that. I called him. Because one thing, God's word never comes back void. Yes, yes. Amen. And that's the most beautiful amen. thing that you got to stand on. So yes. when, when, I, when I realized this and I asked him, was he real? He told me to look outside the window. I'll never forget it. I was 21 years old. Look outside the window. And he said, look at the trees moving. He said, nothing makes them do that but me. Mm. He said, look at the sky. It just flows with the air. Look at everything around you. I created that. And he said, and I'm taking you in a different route. I'm going to give you what you want. But I'm going to take you in a different route. Why? So that I can show you that it was me and not you. Yes, right. yes. And so what happened, guys, I ended up, my dad came home later on that evening from a golf game. And uh, he knew that I was down and out and sad. And he gave me a business card from a guy that worked at uh, BMW and said, Brian, I played golf with this guy. His name is Ronald Johnson. I want you to, I want you to uh, give him a call, Brian. You know, just, he's like, maybe. You know, and I was like, help me out. What? You know, I had never worked a job. I had played sports all my life, so I didn't know how to work. I want you to understand this. I didn't know how to work a job. I was a hard worker. I didn't know my job. And, and so I called Mr. Run. I said, hey, Mr. Run, the thing about me, guys, and the thing about you are, I, I was a go getter. And I said, Mr. Johnson, this is Brian S. Harris. I was like, hey, I know you don't know me, but my dad gave me a card and said to give you a call that maybe you may have a job for me, and I want to let you know that anything that I need to do, I can do it. Can you hire me? He said, well, Brian, I may not be able to hire you. I'm like, what are you telling me to call him for? <laughs> I may not be able to But what I can do is refer you to somebody, but I want you to come to this opportunity and uh, this business meeting, and we sat down. Make a long story short, guys. From 21, we sat down at that meeting that I was not going to go to. I, call, I hit my mom up. I said, Mom, I don't really want to go to this meeting. And my mom said, you're a man of your word. You told me you was going, did you? And I said, yeah, I, I did. She said, well, you going to the meeting. I went to the meeting, and next thing you know, within probably like five or six months, I was making over twenty, thirty thousand dollars $30,000 a month, 21 years old. Mm. Changed my life. Wow. Changed my life. Staying at home with mom and dad. Huh. Wow. $20,000, $30,000 a month. And from 21 to 25, I began to save up a lot of money. That revenue stream just grew and grew and grew. And I began to save up a lot of money, but then I didn't want the MC Hammer story, right? The yeah. one where you, you, you make it and then you lose it, right? I didn't want to do that, you know? So I, uh, I started reading books. I started reading books on successful people, successful people like Napoleon Hill, uh, 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 Andrew Carnegie, uh, uh, John D. Rockefeller. All of these successful people, I began to read books about these people and say, what did they do to hold on to their wealth? And, that, and what I had wasn't wealth, but it was a little bit of money that I felt like I, I could turn into some. And I ended up coming across a quote by Oprah Winfrey. She said, I made my money in broadcasting, but I hold on to my wealth in real estate. Mm. She said, Whoa, okay. So that allowed me to go into this direction of real estate. And every true financial-based pyramid begins with real estate. That's the foundation of every wealth pyramid. Because there's one thing that people are, uh, that, that's not being made anymore, and that's land. That means it continues to go up in value, whether we want it to or not. Yes. And so as I began to read these books, I came across a book, and if you're taking notes, write this down. Robert Kiyosaki, he wrote this book called The Cash Flow. He wrote this book called The Rich Dad, Poor Dad. And I read that book, and I embodied that book. And he wrote another book called Financial Art, How to Build Your Financial Art. Everybody knows Noah, right? He talked about how to build your financial arc so that when the storm comes, you can survive in any economy. I embodied those books. I didn't, I didn't have to pay for thousands of dollars in courses. I didn't know to at the time. I would have if I had, you know, if I had known. But I, I, I began to read these books, and the next thing that I started to do was take action. Come on. It's one thing to have a thought. It's one thing to think, speak, and create, but the next thing is faith without works is what? Dead. You got to take action. Come on. And so I started to take action. I, I went out here in the market and I was like, man, I'm going to buy my house. I'm going to buy my first house. I was so excited. I was nervous at the same time. But when you're nervous about something, you know that that breakthrough is about to happen, right? You know that that moment of breakthrough is about to happen. So I, I, I 
actually started to uh, go out and look at properties, taking the action, and I found this property. And uh, it was like $37,000 at the time. We bought the property, fixed it up, did all these things. A few months later, we sold it for about $75,000. Made like a $30,000 profit in a couple weeks. Freaking amazing. <laughs> it was a great feeling. Then I took that money and I said, well, man, if it was that easy, maybe I could do that 10 more times this month. Oh, wow. Come on. Right? right? And so we started to build an empire, a real estate empire, where by the time of 2007, 2008, 2009, we had months where we had made over two, three hundred thousand dollars $300,000 a month. Woo! Yeah. Woo! Not to say that to say, oh, look at us, look at what we're doing, but that was to let you know that if I can do it. Come on. I'm just a kid from Memphis, Tennessee. If I could do it, anybody could do it. Yes. And so that money, but let me tell you this, my story, me and my wife's story. There was a thing called a recession. <laughs> that we had, we were 20 in our 20s, making money like crazy. We didn't, we didn't understand. We were just making money. It didn't, really didn't matter. Anything we wanted, we could buy. Flying private jets, doing everything we wanted to do. We young, 27, 28 years old. And when the re- that, peak, that thing called a recession, when that hit, <laughs> everything's changed. Call the bank, hey, look, I need that million. Hey, we're not giving out money anymore. Huh? Oh, wow. What? 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 <laughs> huh, pump a break. What do you mean we're not giving out that money anymore? And so, make a long story short, that financial art book came in handy. <laughs> We had to restructure, we had to resurface, we had to realize that, that what we had built was a real estate foundation, but we didn't have it on a cash flow. I want everybody to say it's cash flow. Cash flow. When you're spending money out and there's nothing coming in that you don't have to work for, guess what? You're gonna to continue to pinch off what you got. Cash flow, what is cash flow? Cash flow. The way you receive cash flow, I'm gonna help the kids out with this one. I know I'm speaking to adults as well, but I wanna make sure I attend to the kids. But when when you're speaking of cash flow, I want you to understand where that comes from. It comes from assets. Everybody say assets. Assets. Assets are good. Liabilities are bad. Understand what an asset is. Asset is anything that makes you money without you having to go to work for it that pays you over and over and over again. It's called residual income, passive income. Say passive. All right, so the way this works is, anybody ever buy candy out of a grocery store or vending machine? Yes. Any kids? <laughs> you like candy? You know, you put, like, somebody placed that vending machine there, and you know what? They come back and check that machine every month. Our sons have machines and, and candy. They're like six or seven years old, straight entrepreneurs. We made them get one choice. I love it. Do you want to work for yourself? Come on. Or do you want to receive a check from somebody yes. else? You answer that question. You tell me. You're old enough to make a decision. Yes. You tell me. Which one do you like? Do you like being told what to do? Or do you like being the one doing what you want to do? Waking up when you want to wake up. Yes. Living the life of your dreams. Being able to be great when you want to be great. If you don't feel like doing something someday, what do you do? So you got a vending machine. You place it in the store. It may cost. I'm, I'm giving you a tip. It may cost you 20, 30 bucks. Yes. Everybody probably has that spare change. Yes. If you don't, save it up a quarter. <laughs> and you put a machine in one of these local businesses, a barbershop, mm. hair salon, etc. And then what happens is you fill it up with candy, maybe another $15 or so. And that machine will probably make you $30 a month. One time investment, $30 a month. You do that 10 times, you buy 10 machines, That's guess good. what? That's $300 a month. That's extra good. income. Yes. Some people say, I don't have the money that you had to get started in real estate. Start, do what you can where you are with what you have. That's good. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. That's good. And so now, the passive income, I want everybody to repeat the song. This is the song that we taught to our children. It goes like this. Everybody repeat after me. Assets are good, <laughs> liabilities are bad. Assets are good, liabilities are bad. Assets help make me money. <laughs> liabilities take all of it from me. <laughs> Assets like are good. Way. Liabilities <laughs> are bad. Everybody! Yeah. 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 I hope that, that, that yeah. implants in your head. What is a liability? Anything that eats away at your yes. pockets, your bank account, without you. So, a mortgage uh, payment on your primary residence. Come on. 
lie. Is, a, is a liability. Yes. Your car note is a liability. Yes. Your credit card debt is a liability. All of these Woo! things that eat you. If you were to lose your job today, My mind. what is going to eat away with at you? So what we taught ourselves and then begin to teach other people and uh, Pastor Dent, they uh, actually published a book. They published a book for us and we called it a real estate seminar course. We taught people real estate and the basis of it was financial intelligence. Everybody's familiar with regular school, financial uh, report cards. You get a grade. When we get out into the real world, we're never taught how to grade ourselves Help financially. Us. And one thing that I learned when I got out into the real world of making money is the banks did not care. And I'm not saying this, don't go to school. But the banks didn't care if I made A's in school. Oh, my goodness. Wow. And I was yeah. like, wow. I was like, okay, yeah. so what do you care about? Okay? Of uh, this top quadrant over here, it's called the E quadrant. Everybody with me? Yes. yes. E quadrant. That stands for the employee. That's the person that trades their time for what? Money. 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 If right. you don't go to work, you don't get paid. Right. Period. Mm. There's nothing wrong with that, but they say it's one of the worst ways to sure earn is. money. Over here, on this, this bottom side, right up under the E quadrant, you have the S quadrant. Everybody with me? Yes. The S quadrant stands for the self-employed individual. Yes. That's the person that says, you know what? I'm going to start my own business. Good for you. But if I want it done right, i got to do it myself. That's it. That's the person who may have a lawn service, and he cuts the grass. That's the person who may have a barbershop, and he cuts the hair. That's the person who may be a doctor, and he has to show up to the dentist's office to still get paid. That's the lawyer who has to still go to the To receive a paycheck. That's called an S quadrant, self-employed person. This is known as the right side of the quadrant. Y'all with me? Yes. This right side of the quadrant. Over here on this left side, you got the B quadrant up at the top. And in the B quadrant, that stands for the big business owner. This is a person who has put systems in place that are going to generate money, whether he's there or not. He could be out on the golf course. He could be up here speaking to people. <laughs> he could be doing whatever he wants to do, and the money is going to come in whether he's there or not. It's called a B quadrant. It's called a system. Everybody say system. System. Yeah. And then at, below that, you got the I quadrant. This is where it gets fun. The I quadrant it stands for investor. That's the person who has generated enough money from any one of the other quadrants, and now he has enough money to where he can invest this money into whatever or whatever he wants to, and that money brings in a return to him, okay? His money, your money, will work harder for you than you ever would to bring you back its brothers and sisters and cousins, <laughs> etc. okay? Now, here's yeah. the thing. You got this right side of the quadrant, and you got this left side of the quadrant. Here's a, a statistical stat that literally blew me away when I was 21. I found out about this. It said 90% of the people in the world operate on the right side of the Help quadrant. Us. And they control less than 10% of the nation. Just help us, Brian. Wow. And then he said over here on this right side, you got less than 10% of the people in the world operating. And they control more than 90% of the nation's wealth. Yes, Lord. 
that blew me away. It was like, okay, I have to build a bridge. Okay, I understand if I start my own business, that's good, but that's not the stopping point. I got to grow and become a B-point person to build a system that's going to allow me to free myself up, make enough money, put money in the aqua, and then I go start something else if I want to. So I said I build a bridge from this side to the left side. If you want to get from the right side to the left side, because... By doing that, guys, you begin to build true freedom. And every one of us want to be free. Yes. All of us are familiar with the slavery days and all of those things, right? I would say that jobs are not slavery, but it's not set up to help you Come grow. Come on. That's the okay, there's nothing bad at working a job. Right? Yeah. I feel like a job is your business That's partner. That's good. You use a job's funds to grow you. That's your loan officer until you get to where you need to be. So when we go in and we complain about our jobs and we say, oh, I hate this, you know what? You're going to end up getting taken away before you yeah, ask get taken away. That's good. Go in. Here's what you're doing when you're going into your job. You want to be great. You want to be the best person that you can be because what you're doing is you're training yourself for how you're going to be Hallelujah. in your own business. Woo! That's good. Woo! Your job is a training ground for you to become great. Go above and beyond. You know the people who get out of situations that they're in, they grow out of situations out of that they're them. in. Come on. They grow, out, grow. they grow further. They grow further, not go further. They right. grow further. Come on. If you want to raise, do more. Come Be on. Come on. That's okay. it. If you want more money, make yourself uh, uh, unreplaceable. That's it. Yeah. Because what happens is you're developing skills that they can't take away from Come you. Come on. Whoever they is. Yes. Whoever they yes, are. Yes, yes, yes. You understand what I'm saying? <laughs> so I want you to understand that you can be great, but understand real estate is the basis of your wealth foundation. Cash flow is what you want to get. We all understand that. What, I, what happened with that the scenario of us flipping properties and making hundreds of thousands of dollars a month, the thing is we wasn't focused on cash flow. That's good. Everybody, if you, you see these shows on HGTV, right? I'll flip this house, flip this. Everybody wants to flip this house. But guys, guess what? If you stop flipping, <laughs> the money goes. <laughs> okay? You got to take that money. Here's yeah. the thing. Many of us say, I'm going to save my way to see this. <laughs> say it, bro. Look at my hand. It's closed. Oh, my hand is closed. I'm going to save. This is what you do when you're saving your way to success. Can't nothing get into a false fix. <laughs> It even comes with time. Ooh. Can't nothing get into Ooh. a false fix. You got to open up that hand. Yes. If what's in your hand can't meet your need, then what's in your hand must become your seed. Guys, my name is Brian.